Hey there guys, I'm here to show you guys a video on low temps on the 3930K at stock settings, stock clocks, stock voltages uh, with turbo on. So it does turbo up to 3.8 gigahertz. And first of all, I'm going to show you the test bed here. Uh, we have here the Asus Rampage uh, 4 Extreme uh, with 16 uh, gigabytes of DDR3 memory. XMS3, uh, 1333 at 1.5 volts, 3930K at stock voltage, stock clocks, two GTX 570 HD 2.5 GB graphic cards, an SLI, uh, Creative Labs Titanium HD, sound card, Cooler Master 1000 Watt, Silent, silent Bro. Sun Pro Gold, could have talked there, and it's cooled by the H100 in a push, somewhat push pull configuration. So we have the stock 120 millimeter fans there in a push, and the top on top, I have the 200 millimeter uh, stock half X fans on a pull, sort of. You know what I mean? They're not on their right. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, a stock, uh, I mean, um, a proper way of push pull would be 120, 120, 120, 120. So you guys get what I'm saying. But that's the way you could basically mount the H100 on the half X without doing any type of mat uh, modification. Let's see if I can zoom. So you can see how they're mounted there. See that bar right there where the H100 is mounted? See on the half X? Well, there's one on the other side, but there's no mount in the center. So you can't really mount fans because the fans would be like not mounted correctly. You get what I'm saying? Kind of hard to explain, guys, unless I showed you, which maybe I will later on. But there you go, guys. There's the test bed. Cool. Okay, ambient temperature right now. That's the inside temperature of 26C. The outside is 31C, if you care to know. So there you go, 26C. I've been running Prime 95 for about 15 minutes, 16 minutes or so, 17 minutes, roughly. You can see here that all 12 threads are running 100%. You can see on CPU Z. Got focus. Well, hopefully you guys can read that. 3.114.4 megahertz at 1.272 volts. And I have also EVGA Pre Precision X opened up if you care to see that and HW monitor to monitor the, the temperatures and you can see here the highest temps we'll look at all the way on the right be 63, 59, 59, 60, 62, 60 which I need to write this down and figure out what the average one is which gives us an average of 60.5 minus the ambient temperature of 26 degrees and it gives us a delta of 34.5 degrees Celsius which I believe is pretty good so there you go guys you can see the other temperatures and voltages there if you want to look at that interesting alright guys I'm going to cut here and uh, come back and do overclocks. Alright guys, I'm back here with an overclock of 4.6 gigahertz, running Prime 95, small FFT for about 15, 16, 17 minutes or so, same thing, same amount of length. Um, ambient temperature has changed from 26 down to 25, take a note of that guys. Okay, 
see here on CPU Z running at 4.6 gigahertz or 4.599.9 there you go 4600 megahertz at 1.352 volts <clears throat> that uh, CPU Z reads on the BIOS it's set at 1.355 you can see there every single uh, thread is uh, at a hundred percent maxed out if you guys want to see EVGA precision if you guys care about that and here are the temps uh, all the way to the right the highest temps at 74 71 68 68 74 74 again with the ambient temperature of 25 degrees that gives us an average across all cores of 71.5 degrees Celsius minus the 25 degrees Celsius in ambient temperature that gives us a delta of 46.5 uh, I guess that would seem a little high for some um, maybe 40 degrees Delta would be uh, more sufficient I guess you know I've seen reviews you know people have had 40 41 42 43 44 something like that and reviews on other types of coolers air and or water I don't know what I'd get let's just say if I had a proper water water cooling uh, loop now the delta again was 46.5 on 4.6 gigahertz and the delta on stock clocks was 34.5 so it went up you know quite a few degrees it went up about 20 or so 20 degrees the delta went up in 20 degrees but then again this uh, processor runs really hot and the voltage is pretty low so that's really good I mean if the voltage was a little bit higher I'm, I'm sure it would heat up even more um, so yeah that's why I have it at this voltage and at this clock if I went up even to 4.7 I'd have to ramp up the volts and the heat would just shoot up through the roof so um, I wouldn't like it it probably be like I've seen it you see these high temps if it's a 4.7 at higher volts it'd be you know at 1.4 and above uh, it'd be in the 80s at least and at 4.8 gigahertz it'd be 85 in the 90s where it'd be it would be considered a fail so yeah, I guess, like I said, this is pretty good temps for a 4.6 gigahertz overclock. Um, I don't have it overclocked 24-7. I have it overclocked uh, only when I need it, video editing and benchmarking. Other than that, even in gaming, I have it uh, at stock clocks because it does not make a difference on the overclock in gaming whatsoever. Uh, you can't really, you won't see a difference. And genetic benchmarks, yes, it makes a difference in real world gaming. Not necessarily a gaming benchmark, it does not make a difference. I don't see a difference. I'm gonna give you an example playing Battlefield on Ultra at 5760 by 1080. I get 60 frames per second with uh, VSync on. Overclocked and non overclocked same frames per second so yeah there's the rig again thanks for watching guys if you guys have any comments questions or concerns please let me know in the comments below if you guys uh, like this video please like it and please subscribe